the, the strongest argument for, the, for us being in a simulation, probably being in a simulation, I think is the following. 40 years ago, we had Pong, like two rectangles and a dot. Now, 40 years later, we have photorealistic 3D simulations with millions of people playing simultaneously, and it's getting better every year. And soon we'll have virtu you know, vir virtual reality, we'll have augmented reality. Um, if you assume any rate of improvement at all, um, then the games will become indistinguishable from reality. In the third century, there was a philosopher named Zhuang Zhou, who once had a dream while sleeping, where he found himself as a butterfly. Upon awakening, he was left with two intriguing questions. Whether he was a man dreaming of being a butterfly, or a butterfly dreaming of being Zhuang Zhou. This event sparked a series of conflicts between the notions of reality and simulation. Now, what is reality? It's more intriguing than you might think. It's not just what's out there. It's also influenced by how we see the world, our beliefs, culture, emotions, and how we perceive things. But wait, there's more. Sometimes reality can get twisted by external stuff like media, propaganda, and cool tech like virtual reality and mixed reality. These technologies create amazing simulated or enhanced worlds that can totally mess with our perception of what's real. Now this fascinating philosophical concept will challenge our perception. There is a significant possibility that you might not be real. Perhaps as you watch this video on your phone, it could all be an illusion. Every memory you've made so far might be false and made up. It's possible that your past was pre-planned and your future is already set. This whole universe could be like a carefully written script, where everyone's actions and routines are predetermined. The idea of free will might be an illusion, making us wonder if we are simply complex codes or digital creations of a higher intelligent life form. The most crucial thing is to know your own reality and how it connects to others. As Albert Einstein once said, reality is merely an illusion, albeit a very persistent one. What if the world around you isn't real, but a complex computer program controlling your mind? This idea was put forward by philosopher Nick Bostrom, sparking numerous discussions about the nature of reality. Even well-known figures like Elon Musk, the Tesla car maker, have voiced the possibility that our world might be a virtual matrix of green code. Recent studies have attempted to determine how likely this simulation theory is, and they've suggested that there's a 50-50 chance we could be living in one. What Elon actually meant was that video games used to be very simple in the past, just Pong, with two rectangles and a dot. But as of now, things have changed. Now after four decades, we've got mind-blowing 3D simulations that look almost like real life, with millions of people playing together all at once. And it's only getting better with each passing year. We're on the verge of experiencing virtual reality and augmented reality in our games. So, if we consider any kind of progress, it won't be long before games become so incredibly realistic that you won't be able to tell them apart from the actual world. Now, let's take a moment to consider the possibility of living in a simulation. You might be curious about one important question. Who would be the programmer behind this simulated reality? Other thinkers have expanded on Bostrom's concept. David Chalmers, a philosopher at New York University, suggested that the higher being who created this possible super-realistic simulation could be a developer in the next higher reality, who might appear to us as a god, but not in ordinary ways. They could simply be a teenager, having fun on a computer while running five universes in the background, but it might be someone in the universe who is all-knowing and all-powerful. Brain-spinning yet? Get used to it. So, there's a man named Rizwan Verk, a tech entrepreneur and author. He claimed that just because we think this world is all real and material, doesn't mean it's a done deal. He's talking about quantum physics, which is like the Avengers-level science that studies those teeny tiny particles, the building blocks of everything. Verk shares some fascinating insights from the renowned physicist John Wheeler, who had close ties with Einstein in the past. Wheeler's perspective was, forget the idea of everything being made of particles, it's all about information. Think about everything being created from small bits of data, similar to pixels in an impressive video game. He also coined a well-known scientific phrase, it from bit, which means that everything is founded on information. Even the definition of a particle in physics is fuzzy, according to Verk, and it might in fact just be a qubit, a quantum computing bit. This whole idea challenges how we usually think about the world, where things are solid and separate. Instead, Verk is dropping some truth bombs here. He's suggesting that our whole reality might be more like a computer program, with everything, including us, being just information-based entities. Theoretical physicist David Bohm once shared an incredible idea. He said that reality, 
you know, what we believe is true and all that jazz, is like a crazy loop. Here's how it goes. First off, what we believe to be true is based on our perceptions. You know, how we see and understand things. And our perceptions are influenced by what we're looking for, what we expect to find. And guess what? What we expect to find is shaped by our thoughts, what we're already thinking about. So it's like a never-ending loop where everything connects and influences each other. In the end, our reality is shaped by the things we believe to be true. The world we experience is created by our thoughts and perceptions. It's really amazing, isn't it? This provocative idea is like a philosophical roller coaster that makes us wonder what is actually real and what might just be our brain's inventions. Take your time to understand the meaning of this concept, because it will undoubtedly blow you away. In the realm of movies, AI has been famously portrayed in The Terminator, while simulation theory took the spotlight in The Matrix. In The Matrix, a post-apocalyptic world is dominated by machines that have enslaved humanity, trapping their minds in a fake reality called The Matrix. The machines use humans as an energy source, while the humans remain unaware of the simulation due to brain cables that feed signals and read their responses. In the real world, to achieve something similar, Rizwan Verk proposes two ways. The first involves delving deeper into understanding human consciousness, leading to the development of conscious AI. And the second, a less technical approach, is to create video games where non-player characters behave so intelligently that it's hard to tell them apart from humans. Verk calls this the Turing Test, a challenge to trick our consciousness into thinking that the game world is real. Verk ominously hints that these possibilities are on the horizon. Quantum computing might be a significant factor in advancing AI within video games, bringing us closer to these fascinating and slightly chilling concepts. An astronomer named Martin Rees talked about it in an interview. He wondered about the limits of computing power. You know, like how much information can computers handle? Can they do even more mind-blowing simulations in the future as they get way more powerful? Another smart guy, Paul Davies, has been thinking about this for a long time. He said some deep stuff about it. In fact, way back in 2003, he wrote about how mathematicians proved that a super-duper computer could create a fake world that can make its own fake world. And it goes on and on, like an endless loop. Imagine simulations within simulations within simulations. It's like a never-ending dream. Davies also suggested that if there's a vast real multiverse, then there would be way more virtual multiverses that we can't even count. It's like a whole bunch of different universes inside each other. The simulation theory suggests that our reality might be a simulated or virtual experience, much like a video game. However, one critical point raised against this idea is that while video game characters, such as those in Grand Theft Auto, are not real, we, as real people, genuinely experience our thoughts and feelings. So, if our reality is supposedly a product created by someone else, why do we have genuine experiences? Even in video games, characters seem to have some level of experience. However, they argue that there is a stark difference between the experience of the game characters and the player controlling the game. Nevertheless, there exists a blurry area where aspects of the player's consciousness and aspects of the character's experience seem to blend, giving rise to a peculiar form of combined consciousness. This basic connection between the player and the character has been evident for a long time, but with the advancement of VR devices, these boundaries are starting to blur even further. Now, with the use of virtual reality devices like Oculus VR, the immersion into the game world becomes much more intense. For instance, when riding a roller coaster as a character in a VR game, the player can feel a sense of gravity, as if they were truly there. This heightened level of immersion blurs the lines between the player's reality and the virtual reality of the game character. As VR technology continues to progress, it brings us closer to a more integrated and lifelike experience within simulated worlds. The distinctions between the player and the character are becoming less clear, leading to an even more profound connection between the two, where the player's sensations and the character's experiences intertwine in new and exciting ways. This raises fascinating questions about the nature of consciousness, the boundaries of reality, and how our experiences might be influenced in the future by the advancement of VR technology. Now, where the feeling of gravity comes from when we use VR devices like Oculus VR to ride a roller coaster in a game, it suggests that this feeling exists in the space between the character in the game and our minds, as if our minds are inside the character. In the future, this connection between our minds and virtual characters might become even stronger. However, it's possible that a more detailed or rich version of these feelings is being projected to some other mind for their benefit. 
and that's why consciousness came into existence. Similar to characters in Grand Theft Auto, we exist to create integrated audiovisual outputs, and our experiences could be intended for someone else who is experiencing our lives through us. What does this significant discovery mean for us? Well, first of all, we can't question Elon Musk anymore. Secondly, we need to remember what the simulation hypothesis really is. It's the biggest conspiracy theory, suggesting that everything, except for nothing, is fake and designed to deceive our senses. It's like our worst fears of powerful forces secretly controlling our lives have come true. But even though we now know about this simulation, we can't escape from it or change it. All we can do is accept this reality and try to make the best of it while we live our lives on Earth.